all right guys midwest cam back at it again and uh today we're going to be doing the methyl iodide video uh methyl iodide is going to be used to alkylate vanillin uh this is going to be compared to using dimethyl carbonate for alkylation of vanillin uh we're going to see if we can get dimethyl carbonate to do its job well um we're going to see because methyl iodide is effective so we have a good comparison here um Let's get into it. All right, so we have 175 mils of H3PO4, and we got 66.4 grams of KI, uh, so phosphoric, and phosphoric acid and potassium iodide, respectively. Um, and then this is gonna create hydroiodic acid, which is my intermediate, really. I'm not looking to isolate that. I want to isolate methyl iodide, so we're gonna be um, using a bit of methanol here, 120 milliliters. We're gonna add that up. The of methanol was mildly exothermic. This could be methyl iodide that has reeked in some side, but I don't smell anything, thank goodness. So we got our KI. It needs to get up to about 70, or 50 now. Condensate on the walls. We have <laughs> ice bath here, in the condenser bath here, tons of ice. Um, we have our um, trap, sodium hydroxide trap, trap anything that might be escaping, and our new ventilation, which at the end is right there. Check that, we're almost at 60. We definitely have something volatile coming over, as you can see there. Yeah, definitely some condensation there. Uh, but this, this bath right here is definitely... Yeah. Yeah, we're cool. This bath. Oh, yeah. We're good. We're, we're good. Alright, let's wait for some... Finally getting a little condensate. But uh, due to the extreme amount of ice I put in the water, it's cooled off the head and made it a little hard to get a good temperature. There we go. But we are in Indeed, condensing some stuff right there. Finally reaching the distillation head. It's not just condensation in the head. We're actually seeing a little bit of the about to be distillate coming. Expected condensation, methyl iodide, in the condenser. Better flow rate. Little tiny oily droplets. Distillate down there. All right, guys, round two. I've doubled the, uh, the starting materials. Uh, 350 of 85 percent uh, H3PO4, and then we got 132-ish grams of. Potassium iodide, it's like 132.44, I believe. Um, and then we added 240 mils of methanol. Now, come up here, get in condensation. Oh, come on. There we go, a lot of condensation. And then if we go up here, 33.7, a little low. No low. But this batch and the last batch are going to be redistilled together. Um, but if you can see, it's hard, I know. Much better We're drinking, done, you guys. Time. So, this is a leftover. Um, actually, all the salt has uh, disappeared. It's interesting. Uh, 
This is the setup. I used a drying tube as an extension to kind of get some fractionation, just a light amount. And uh, let's get it out first. Hi. Or my water bath. Hey, hey. Got our 60 mil thing. Got about 30 mils, which is about what we should expect, roughly, since it's not as efficient. So I am going to throw a small crystal of sodium thiosulfate in there to remove the color, wash it with the water, maybe some clean water next, and then a couple salt water washings. Uh, then we'll dry it and store it. But this is kind of something that's been done time and time again, so I'm not gonna show you or torture you with this you know, clean. There we go, we got round two set up. My 250 round bottom on the hot plate. And you can actually see the vapor line. And we're getting some condensation. I'll show you if you look right about there. Uh, drops of distillate. And we are at 40C39, but you know, 40. Um, and it's within the accuracy of my thermometer. So we're gonna go ahead and Cloudy, maybe some water. We'll fix that. Sorry about the fan. It's kind of important with this one. I don't know if you can see in there. You can see the water line there. But inside, you can see a little small pool. Hard to see. But if we go over here, Here we go. This right here is the dimethyl carbonate that I've ensured was absolutely pure. I have some other uh, bits that aren't, but um, this is a little cloudy looking. Let's see if I have a different angle on it. There we go. It's actually magnesium sulfate floating around in there. And we've got about 30 milliliters, which is about 67 grams of methyl iodide. Um, pretty cool. You can fit so much weight into such a little bit of stuff. But um, this is going to conclude this video. Uh, I was really just wanting to try this method of methyl iodide, not using phosphorus or iodine, and that uh, this is going to be uh, pretty cool. This will help us prove that our next step worked. Um, so with that, I'm out. Now I finally got a good phone with a good camera. Uh, now that the filming's already done. Uh, so, anyways, these are my quantities. Uh, you know, just properties, molar masses. Uh, so, um, this reaction that I did was... Um, potassium iodide and phosphoric acid in the presence of methanol. Um, and the mechanism here is actually pretty simple. Um, you're making HI in situ, um, or on site. Um, so the, we get on here, potassium iodide attacks the, or it's really the other way around. The phosphoric acid attacks potassium iodide, leaving potassium dihydrogen phosphate, and then the protonated um, iodide, so hydrogen iodide. Um, the hydrogen iodide should go on immediately to react with the methanol to make methyl iodide and water. Um, this is actually both of these are reversible. Um, you know, this one a little more to some extent because of the water uh, will react with methyl iodide to produce those starting products. Um, but the cool part about that is uh, methyl iodide's boiling point is so low that you can just distill it off. And this is a, an example of Le Chatelier's principle. And uh, that means that the more product you remove, the, the methyl iodide, the more you remove from uh, from the uh, reaction mixture, the farther forward the reaction is going to go towards completion. Um, so as you can see here, the HI that's formed attacks the methanol, and that makes this high oxonium ion. And I've actually, this is incorrect drawing, but that leaves the iodide behind there, and then this uh, monoatomic iodide. That's probably why it reacts when the oxonium leaves. But this is actually going to cleave off water, because water is a good leaving group. So uh, this shouldn't actually be circled, it's just the protonated oxonium form. Um, that's a good way to see that there's two hydrogens and an oxygen, and they break away because water is a good leaving group. And that methyl iodide forms, which is immediately distilled from the reaction mixture. One thing I did notice about this reaction is that um, a lot of people were saying, or a couple people were saying, heat to 70C. My best results were done heating my water bath to 85C. And I know that seems a little excessive, uh, but it worked. And um, everything distilled over at 33 point something. And I thought that was weird, but I gave it a couple water washings, salt water washings, and then redistilled. Everything came over at the correct temperature, every last drop. I distilled till dryness on accident, 
and uh, actually recovered everything. Nothing had went over 42 uh, C, 42 point something, I don't know. But anyways, um, I got a good yield out of this without using um, phosphorus or iodine. So you can use phosphoric acid and potassium iodide, which are much easier. And methanol is very simple. So um, yeah, we, we got about 67 grams, uh, which was pretty nice. Um, these quantities right here, I, I used on the first batch and I got nine grams of methyl iodide. Um, there's a YouTube channel here that posted this video about 12 years ago, as of now, uh, who did this exact formulation, high uh, methanol and phosphoric acid molar excesses. Um, and the methyl iodide they got was 43 grams. I got nine, so I doubled up. I heated up to 85 this time, and I got um, 67 grams off of double this. I should have expected 86, but that's okay. I still got a very good yield off of this, uh, comparable to some of the, the uh, red pea and I2 uh, with methanol methods. So this has been Midwest Cam. Thanks for watching. See you next time.